My name is Barrett Peary. Thanks for being here. Appreciate the support. I'm excited to uh, get to talk to you today. Kind of an opening statement for me. Um, tremendous opportunity for me to uh, come to Texas Tech and to work for Coach Adams. Coach Adams is a guy that uh, I've been very close to for a number of years and uh, I'm excited to be close to him even, even more and to try to help us win championships at a high level. When I had this opportunity from Coach come my way about a week ago, there was not much thought or concern for me what I needed to do, and, and I needed to get down here and be with Coach. Uh, sitting in a, a head, co head coaching position at Portland State, um, for some people might have been a challenging decision, but this was an opportunity that uh, I had to take, and we're really, really excited to be here. Okay, we're going to open up to questions. Uh, Carlos Silva, you want to go ahead and start us off? And if you're going to have a question, go guys, go, go ahead and utilize the raise your hand tool. Hey, Coach Carlos Silva from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Uh, just in terms of what you were able to kind of see, and you've already alluded to it, but what were some of the challenges or just some of the unique uh, qualities that you liked about Texas Tech and what uh, brought you here? Well, shoot, I'm coming in at such a challenging time. Uh, I spent one day in the old offices and then got to go across the street to the Womble and, and be a part of a $40, $40 million building. So uh, it's an exciting time to be here. Obviously, there's been a great buzz. Uh, here in West Texas about Coach getting the job and what a tremendous story it is for Coach and his family and, and for the hard work and efforts that they made and all the different places that Coach has been and coached and been successful at and now to be able to do it at the highest level is really, really neat. But um, our challenge, you know, is like anybody's challenge right now is to continue to load, load a roster with, with high-level guys. Um, our momentum is fantastic right now, and you're, you're going to see great things coming out, our, out of our offices over the next couple of weeks with the guys that we think we're getting and a part of. And so there's a great buzz in our offices, and we're really excited about it. I know you spoke about going across to the new facility. I guess what were some of the things that really stood out to you about that, just in terms of just what, what, what they have there and what, what you have now to kind of, as you mentioned, kind of tell guys this is what you have here at Lubbock? Well, what don't we have? I'm not sure what we don't have. I'd, I'd like to make that list and try to figure out what we don't have. I think we have everything. It, it's incredible. You know, I was doing a uh, Zoom tour with, with a young man and, and his folks and his coaches last night. And his coach chimed in, and I could say the exact same thing to you. His coach chimed in and said, Coach, I've been in a lot of NBA facilities, and they're not as good as this. And I said, I agree. I have too. So, um, the commitment that's been made uh, to the people from from the people here and what we have right now is second to none, and I think we'll brag that up for quite a while until we figure out somebody that's beat us on it. In terms of the current players, who have you spoken to, and I guess uh, who are some of the guys that you've kind of really kind of bonded with so far? I know it's been, been a whirlwind, but I guess who have you kind of spoken to from the current team? You know, so I've spoken to all the guys. We actually got to work out with them for the first time last night, and you know, we've had a meal together and some team meetings and things like that. We've got six or seven guys here right now that are really committed and excited about Coach. Um, one thing about Coach, and I don't, I don't think this will be a secret, you know, you need to be an all-in Texas Tech guy, and it's not a 99% deal, it's a 100% deal, and so um, whether you see movement here or around the country, um, it's kind of the environment and the situation we have going on with the portal. Everybody loves to talk about the portal, but um, we've got a group of guys that are really committed and excited about Coach and what we got going. Okay, let's go to David Collier. Hey, Coach. Uh, we, we've looked all, at all the numbers and everything from your time at Portland State and everything, but what kind of coach and, and what did – Coach Adams uh, see in you, I guess. Everybody talks about the uh, pressing defense and everything, but uh, what do you like to do offensively as well that maybe Coach Adams can utilize? You know, part of Coach Adams and I's relationship has simply been over the years talking ball. Um, and we've done a lot more full court than maybe Coach has, but a lot of our philosophies have, have been very, very similar. And as we bounce stuff off each other year in and year out, that's kind of how We've become what we've become. It's no secret that I've been a really fast-paced guy at the offensive end and will probably uh, be a part of that as well. Coach really wants to be able to play faster at the offensive end. You know, one thing we've talked about is we're going to do such a great job. You guys know that. We're going to do such a great job defending people, creating turnovers, getting stops. We need to do an even better job than in the past of going down and scoring the basketball and making them pay for their mistakes. And so we want to be a fast team. We want to be a running team, a, a team that makes good, makes good decisions and takes good shots. But I think you'll see our pace at both ends of the floor go up a little bit with, with what coach wants to do. Obviously, you guys want 
do a lot of stuff in the transfer portal, but given the contacts that you have and Coach Adams has, I mean, are you guys going to be uh, looking at the JUCO level maybe more than they have necessarily in years past? You know, I don't know if I have the answer on more, but I, I think you have to look at everything, and I think we will be. You know, I, I think that, you know, with the climate and the environment being the way it is, and, and then you have guys that have a lot of experience at all different levels, and that means contacts. I think we'll be looking at a lot of different things, but we definitely do have a lot of experience between the two of us at that level and have had great success. So our connections and, and our inroads for those types of places are really good at the right places. Um, so that wouldn't shock me if we did a few things with that here in the near future. But between the portal and the high school guys and the junior college guys, I, I think you'll see a balance of everything. You know, the one thing about the portal that we discuss every day is so many of these guys are one-year people. And I don't know if you can build an entire roster on one-year people, even though you know there's, there's people that are doing that. Um, we need to have a balance. We need to have four-year guys, three-year guys, you know, two-year transfers, whatever it may be. But there will be some one-year guys on the roster that come in. I'll, I'll, I would bet you money. And finally for me, um, did, did you have any previous relationship with uh, Coach Sutton, given the fact that you and his dad obviously have a connection there with the uh, College of Southern Idaho being a couple of former head coaches? Yeah, that's a great evaluation on your part. Yeah, Sean and I go way back um, when Sean was an assistant coach for his father. When I was at Southern Idaho, uh, they used to recruit our program heavily. I think a couple of our guys actually went out there. We had two guys go out there and, and play for Coach Sutton. Um, when Coach Sutton retired, we actually had a big uh, uh, banquet for him. He came out and did our coaches clinic and got him reacquainted with people that he hadn't been with for 30 years. and and some things like that. In fact, the president that I worked for at the College of Southern Idaho, uh, who became the president, his first job at the College of Southern Idaho was Coach Sutton's assistant. And so he had moved from assistant basketball coach at the College of Southern Idaho to president about 40 years later. So there were a lot of ties that always kind of made us close and be connected. So yeah, that was an easy one for me getting back with Sean. Okay, let's go to Joe Yeager. Joe, I think you're you're on mute, man. Okay. <laughs> there you go, Joe. Hey, welcome to Lubbock. Thanks, brother. Uh, what yeah. what's 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 the saying I was supposed to use? I'm not from here, but I hurried back to get here as quick as I could. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Somebody yeah. told me to use that. You did that pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Hey, coach, uh, I was wondering uh, up to this point uh, in your career. Have there been any particular like geographical areas that you focused your recruiting efforts on? Uh, any areas that you'd say are kind of your specialty? Um, yeah, I think my specialty is is that you know western part of the United States for sure. Um, I think we're going to try to be a balanced group as we build our staff and have people be strong in certain parts of the country, like many staffs. Um, obviously, the junior college. Uh, uh, route for me nationwide is a strong one and I've used that over the years for sure but I've been more of a west coast guy than than east um, you know we worked in Iowa and so we spent some time in the midwest as well but more west than east but I, I think that as coach builds the staff and plugs pieces in um, I think you'll see us be balanced in all parts of the country and you know this is a national brand this is a national team so it'll be easy to probably figure out that this team will have guys from coast to coast. Okay, let's go to Eric Kelly. Coach, was this a uh, call you were surprised to get when you were maybe expecting once you found out Coach Adams got the job? Um, well, I'll tell you what. The timing was such we had a couple of things going on last week before Coach got the call or the week you know before Coach got the call. And I was really, really hoping that, got, that Coach was going to get this job and I would get a phone call. And when he call, called me, this was not a tough decision. This was not something that my wife knew that if he called, this is where we were going to go and we weren't going to talk about those other options anymore. And uh, like I said, it was really easy. Oftentimes when you make moves to other schools, um, it's a great move and you're excited about it. Um, you think you know the people pretty good, but this one, this one's pretty low risk for me as far as who I'm going to work with because of my relationship with Coach and also what I think of him and what I believe in him. Obviously, it's early on and still more assistance to get hired. But have you 
Has he kind of outlined what your roles within the team will be, or is it kind of really for them? You know, we're still building that. Obviously, um, we have we see eye to eye on a lot of things at both ends of the floor, and we spent years and years talking about it as well as late nights this last week. But as we build the staff, I think Coach will do a good job of divvying out roles and responsibilities and, and focusing on what we, we should really be doing uh, as assistants. Let's go to Ben Golan. Coach, with the dead period ending in a few weeks, just how big of a difference is it for you to, you know, evaluate in person versus, you know, just on video? And then how excited are you to be on the road again? Well, what do we got till June 1st for the dead period before we have a possibility of maybe getting out? So we've got a while. Um, my fingers are crossed that on June 2nd we can get out and do something. And really for me, I'm just hoping for a normal July I think every coach in America is just hoping that we can have a normal July and get out on the road and, and get things back to normal with going to different events and seeing kids. Um, there's no replacing as we've all become virtual recruiters and watching guys all the time on our laptops. Um, there's no replacing being there in a gym and, and seeing who kids really are. And, and not, not just the seeing their bodies and seeing how they shoot up close and this and that, but how they act, how they talk, how they sit on the bench, you know. I mean, so many things. You know, you think a guy's 6'4", and then you get to the game and they're six one and a half. We've all had that story. So um, all those things that we really hope to get back to normal simply because that's how it should be. That's how we want to do it. And, uh, yeah, we want it back. We really want it back.